that and baste um, with some green after we primed them. We're gonna go ahead and get the first bit of shading in with some Beale Tan Green. Let's see what, how this turns out. This is my um, normal orc um, style skin. So I really want to test to see how this product, well, not really product, but yeah, I guess it is material, is really what it is. This material reacts to my type of stuff. Okay, so that does the Beale Tan Green shading. Well, sort of goes from there. Uh, and if y'all wondering why I got like some ivory spread in there too, this is gonna be like an under highlight for the shade to kind of grab on. So we'll be like a lighter green shade for some of the higher parts, and then darker green shade. We'll be working on the lower parts that weren't shaded as well, I mean, as weren't brightened up as much. It's kind of a cool little trick when it comes to airbrushing, so give it a shot, guys. All right, we'll wait for this dry. All right, so we got the Beale Green, uh, the Beale Tan Green to dry on um, both models that I've been working on. Um, now we're going to start getting some of these colors in. So we're going to do some silvers on the weapon, chain, and the gun, or the slugger, black pants. Black boots, how we go red steel tips for that. Black on the rubber. I'm gonna use a brown wash on his jaw to make that jaw stand out, kind of like I did with this guy right here. This is a uh, Buzz Gob Big Mac. So we'll get that uh, the jaw looking like that. And then we'll probably do some cool coloring with the weapon itself. We'll have some silver bits on there, but it'll be some transitions so we'll go from there guys All right, so we also notice that he's got some scars here and here. So we're gonna try to accent that. We're gonna use a little bit of bone white to try to accent that. See what we can get out of there. We'll be able to fix those eyes later when we do some dry brushing. All right, so we got that done. So now, with these, we're gonna need a little bit of wash to kind of pull them out. We're gonna use some crimson, uh, care about crimson, sorry. And that's what's gonna be 
what we're going to use. For these cars. All right, so we're going to get some brown wash on the, the silvers here. That brush should be a little malleable. There we go. So instead of using like earth racks on this one, I use surface uh Seraphine Sipia. Gives a little bit, it's a more of a lighter brown. Oranges. Which I like more for orcs. Alright. So that's done. We get some dry brushing done on the green. <laughs> So I soak up some of this wash. Soak up some of this wash as well. So I'm gonna get some more detailing done now, uh, since we're waiting for certain washes to dry. Uh, that way we can get some more dry brushing in. We're gonna try to pull out these little puppies right here. I got too much water on my brush. As you can tell. So we're going to do a rust gray dry brushing. Oh. All right, here we go. Yeah, that looks good. That looks nice. We'll do the pants now. All right, so now we got the pants highlighted with some dry brushing, and that looks really good to me. Overall, it looks pretty swell. Let's get some Necron compound out on the metals. Hit up these reds too, just to get those highlighted nice. I'll do the same thing on the gun.
chain. I will call this guy done. So I'm gonna get some basing done on him. And we'll get some uh, close ups of him and we should be good to go. All right, so we got another 3D printed model done, which is, I think it's pretty unique how it's been modeled and uh, put together. Um, here you go. Maybe you can get, I don't know how that works. I'm trying to learn this stuff. But you can see somewhat of it, I guess. Um, and I'll have some stills up at the end. But again, you can't tell the difference between this and a regular orc. Look like this is more muscular. This is obviously wouldn't be a 40k or maybe a fantasy orc. Um, but orcs uh, players like me are, are known to um, kit bash. And I'll show you some stuff. Hold on. Kit bashing wise, you know, I got my. This is a fantasy war boss that we made into a uh, war boss with mega armor um, for 40k. Used, you know, a shaman's pole from the fantasy version. I got a big killer claw that made it look like a the uh, relic version. My thought of uh, the relic version. A big chopper. You know, if it's not gonna happen, but still. I can bring him double melee. He's got a, you know, anything he's outfitted for just about anything I need him to be when it comes down to a, you know, war boss. And even here, took an armager here and kit bashed it into um, a death dread or a mecha death dread. He's tall enough to be a mecha one with the uh, um, custom, um, man, KFF, custom force field. There you go. You know, so he's got his rattle cannon and which is a bunch of different things all glued together and a saw. So, you know, orc players are already known for kit bashing and bringing other models in and stuff like that. I mean, Hill right here, uh, a death cop that I have made from uh, Necron parts and uh, a, a motorcycle. Put it on the stand like this and there you go. I have a death dread that's unique. Um, so I think 3D modeling, 3D printing can be very viable um, in all sorts of ways. And I'm really excited about how this uh, Scar Boy, as I'm going to call it, uh, worked out. You know, he's using tires, a shoulder pad, and the rest of his bear, he's got scars all over him. He's ready to go in and do some work with his choppa and slugger. So, very cool. I'm excited how these turned out. Stay tuned for the next one. Um, I got some buddies in a community that are... 3D printing stuff, send, send them out to me and let me paint them up and show them off. It's kind of fun. Um, we'll see where this all goes. Alrighty. See you next time. We need Studio Bros out. This is a corn dog. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and just paint, build, and scrap. Alright, guys.